Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Kuda Education. I'm your host, Nicholas Main. So today what I wanted to talk about was my experience upgrading to CUDA Toolkit 10. To give you a little bit of background, I'm running a Windows-based system with a Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. And I had CUDA Toolkit 9 installed and running for the most part. However, I started to um, <clears throat> have problems when I needed to run the NVC, NVCC compiler in the command prompt. And for whatever reason, you know, there are a bunch of errors, but I, I couldn't run it <clears throat> properly. And there were certain flags and certain things I needed to do when compiling my program so that I could, you know, see certain metrics and things like that. So I said, okay. Um, it's, it's time for me to, to, to just make the change and upgrade to CUDA Toolkit 10 and, and pray to God that it wouldn't be a long and disastrous experience like upgrading uh, or getting CUDA Toolkit 9, right? So this is just an overview of, of, you know, what I did it, what happened. So here you go. Um, the, the first issue I had after downloading and ins installing the program was that my NVIDIA graphics card, for some reason, became not digitally signed, right? So Windows would basically flag my NVIDIA graphics card device as um, not being digitally signed. And therefore, um, the, you know, my Windows system or my... CUDA programs simply would not recognize my GPU, right? So I would compile and run my, I, I was able to compile my program. I would run the program and um, it would basically say there's no GPU or CUDA enabled device found, right? So what I had to do was, you know, bounce around the internet and figure out a way to drop uh driver wh what is it called um disable driver signature enforcement in windows 10. so i went to this site i will add the descriptions in the links i will add the link in the description below but i basically had to go to this website and then try and run the specific command to turn off the uh driver signature enforcement thing in Windows. So I did that, but what would happen is that it would, my, my security settings on my system would say, I can't do that because um, my, you know, my, my, sec my security settings don't allow me to do it, right? So it would deny me. And I, I tried running the command several times. It wouldn't, it wouldn't run and um, my, therefore my settings wouldn't change, right? So my drive was still not digitally signed and Windows was still flagging it. So then I had to go to this site here and uh, basically disable secure boot. So this is sort of uh, something in the BIOS or, or before Windows starting, started. So on my system, you know, you, you do restart or you do shut down. And as soon as you start up back, you press the power button, you you have to go into the, the BIOS and um, <clears throat> disable secure boot. Now, once you disable secure boot, you, Windows will start up and the my NVIDIA graphics card was not flagged as not being digitally signed, right? And that's because in the, when you disable secure boot, you're you're disabling, um, I guess, all the the uh, driver enforcement things. Okay, so I was able to run and, and everything was, was able to go. Um, even though everything was working fine in terms of me being able to disable um, or, or, you know, not have my graphics card flagged, I still went ahead and ran the command in the first step just to, to turn off um, the, the, the system check on that side. So I disable secure, 
the same uh, the same secure boot and then i also ran the the command prompt instruction um and once once i did all that i i was able to like restart my computer all the time and not have an issue with with you know my my graphics card being flagged right so you know now now i'm able to run programs and and things of that nature but before you do all this, just just especially when you're disabling secure boot, just just realize that you're making your system less secure because secure boot basically is is trying to check to make sure all the drivers and everything that it's loading is actually um, coming from reputable official manufacturers and all that good stuff, and it, it's supposed to make your system better. So if if you don't have it installed, um, or if you don't have secure boot running. Um, and not doing the system checks for the, the 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 driver signatures, then your system is somewhat less secure. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it, right? The other issue that I ran into, and, and maybe I should have addressed this first, was that I had a problem with the Windows SDK um, thing. So when I when I would try to compile the program, it would it would basically say the Windows SDK version something, something, something wasn't found, right? And because of that, I um, I had to basically go into, you know, the, the Visual Studio 2017 program, uh, click the debug menu at the top of the program, click the project properties, and then in the Windows SDK menu, I then choose a later version that would compile. So basically this, this window comes up and then you choose like a later version than the one the, the the program was trying to compile. Once you do that, you will be able to um, you will be able to 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 compile and run the program. So here is a Visual Studio. You basically go into the debug test test for is the name of my project. So test for properties, and then um, you you go into this guy right here and you can choose the correct tool set right so it's on the general windows sdk and you choose the correct tool set right and you should be able to run your program right so that was my my experience with with running um with, with getting CUDA Toolkit 10 um, installed on my system. Now, there are a couple of things, right? Um, the first is that I, I was running, I was in, I was upgrading from CUDA Toolkit 9 going into CUDA Toolkit 10, okay? So, you know, for a lot of you guys, that's going to be the case where you're upgrading from a previous version. But for a lot of you, you're going to be installing CUDA Toolkit 10 for the very first time, right? Now, if you are doing that for the very first time, it's the process is a little bit different. Just to give you a little bit of background, I previously did a video on CUDA Toolkit 9, um, installing that toolkit from scratch. So having no toolkit framework installed before, coming in fresh into the whole CUDA ecosystem and, and getting it to run on my, on my computer. So I did a video on CUDA Toolkit 9 that outlines that whole process. So if you're installing CUDA Toolkit 10 from scratch, I suggest you watch my old video on installing CUDA Toolkit 9 just to get all the prerequisites out of the way. So what I mean by prerequisites is like, you know, installing a Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition, um, you know, making sure all the settings are right, things of that nature. So what I suggest you do, if you're installing CUDA Toolkit 10 from scratch, is to watch this video first, right? My previous CUDA Toolkit 9 video, that's the very first video I have on my channel, right? Watch this video first, and then, um, Try and try, try and install CUDA Toolkit 10, install Visual Studio 2017, and um, and then see if it runs. If you if you get into issues of 
you know, the signature where the, the your, your video drive becomes not signed or you have um, or you have a Windows SDK problem, then you basically try to um, you download the proper Windows SDK that it's asking for or the later version, and then you select it and see if you can compile and run the default program. Right, so it's a it's a little bit convoluted, but you you should be able to um, to to make progress. So just watch this video, see what the process is like. Um, see what all the things I discussed, you have to make sure your graphics card is a compute capability of, you know, whatever, um, a certain amount in order for it to be CUDA enabled and all that stuff. So just watch this video. You could also go to, there is a, a, a post on my website that talks about it, like with, with written instructions on how to do it. Once you do that, then you come, then you try and install CUDA Toolkit 10. And if you have any of these issues, then you come here and you try to um, you try to, to to fix them, okay? So that is basically my experience running CUDA Toolkit 10. Guys, remember to visit CUDAeducation.com, right? This is CUDAeducation.com. Uh, you could also subscribe to the channel and also check the bell so you get notifications when I do new videos. Remember to donate to the cause, okay? It takes a lot of time and energy for me not only to, to, to figure this stuff out, but also to make videos and write the instructions and do it in such a way that it's easy for everyone to understand, right? So uh, be sure to donate. You could catch me on Twitter at CUDA Education, right? That's, that's my Twitter. You could email me at CUDAeducation at gmail.com. Um, if you also want to do any kind of one-on-one -on -one sessions or consulting or, or just help with getting your system set up, email me at kudaeducation at gmail.com and we could work something out. Um, what else is there? Kudaeducation.com is, is a very good website to just help you to get the, get the, the, process started of you learning CUDA. CUDA is a language of the future. It's a GPU programming language. It's, you know, where artificial intelligence and a lot of other cool stuff runs on. High performance computer, computing, data center, processing, all that good stuff. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.